Hello, my name is Jan Knodel. I'm the Extension Entomologist for North Dakota State University. Weed stem sawfly is an economically important insect pest of wheat, especially hard red spring wheat in North Dakota. In the northern Great Plains of North America, hard red spring wheat is one of the major crops to the tune of 13.4 million acres of annual production. Of that 13.4 million acres, about half of the acreage is grown in North Dakota each year. In order for spring wheat growers to maximize production efficiency and achieve maximized profits, insects, weeds, and diseases need to be managed. In the area of insects, few exclusively attack spring wheat. However, one insect, the wheat stem sawfly, has a history of causing damage and yield losses. The weed stem sawfly originally attacked the native grasses of the northern Great Plains. Around the turn of the century, farmers in North Dakota, Montana, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan began to notice damage to their spring wheat crops. By the 1920s, the wheat stem sawfly became the northern Great Plains' most damaging spring wheat insect. Currently in the U.S., the sawfly is only a major concern in western and south central parts of North Dakota and the central and western sections of Montana. Producers in eastern Wyoming and western South Dakota and Nebraska reported an increase in damage of winter wheat by the weed stem sawfly. In the early years, producers tried a number of strategies to reduce the problem including deep moldboard plowing, early removing of rye grasses for hay, trap crop planting, and early wheat harvesting. These strategies provided some control, yet for the most part producers have quit using them. Adult wheat stem sawfly is actually a small wasp. It is about three quarters of an inch long with a shiny black body yellow legs and stripes on the abdomen. The adult has four smoke-colored wings that usually fold over the back when it rests. Adults begin to emerge in early June and emergence may continue into early July. Adult sawflies can be found resting on the leaves or stems of host plant, especially during windy conditions. The insect is most active when the temperature is 70 to 90 degrees with sunny skies and little wind. The sawfly is a weak flyer, so it usually seeks out grass stems near its emergence site. However, it can migrate up to a mile in search of a host. When the female locates a grass stem of suitable diameter, it deposits a single egg inside the stem. However, a stem often receives several eggs from a number of females. The sawfly eggs are kidney-shaped and about a sixteenth of an inch long and pale white in color. After about seven days, the egg hatches. The larvae is legless with a white body and a brown head capsule. It will go through at least four larval stages before development is complete. It is about a half an inch long when mature. If removed from the stem, the larvae assumes an S-shaped position. Well developing, the larvae feeds on the inside part of the wheat stem during the months of June and July. After the larva completes development, it moves downward in the stem and cuts a V-shaped notch about an inch above the soil surface. Wind coupled with the weight of the head may cause the stem to break, resulting in plant lodging. To determine if the lodging is a result of sawfly damage, split the stem lengthwise. The presence of dust-like debris means the lodging was due to the sawfly. After cutting the notch, the larvae plugs the stem with debris immediately below the notch. The resulting stub serves as an overwintering chamber. The sawfly overwinters in the larval stage. Next spring, diapause is broken and the larvae 
develops into a pupae for 20 to 30 days. Adults emerge from the pupal cocoon in mid to late June. The weed stem sawfly is only damaging in the larval stage. Adults do not harm the plant. The loss to the crop is due to the combination of sawfly larval feeding and lodging. Damage from the feeding inside the stem can reduce yields by 10 to 20 percent. Both the kernel number and weight is reduced, while protein percent drops slightly. The second type of loss results from the wheat's lodging after the sawfly cuts a notch in the stem. Lodging rates vary depending on the subsequent weather conditions and losses can be extreme, up to 100 percent. Once the stem is cut, High winds or thunderstorms will create excessive lodging. The sawfly only damages wheat. In North Dakota, it attacks spring wheat, germ wheat, and winter wheat. The insect will deposit eggs in oats and barley, but in oats, the larvae fails to develop. And in barley, the larvae seldom survives. Many crops are totally immune to sawfly, including sunflowers, corn, dry beans, flax, sawflower, canola, buckwheat, soybeans, cranberry, potato, pulse crops, and sugar beets. In the early 1950s, researchers developed a sawfly resistant variety of wheat. It was called Rescue. Resistant varieties have a stem filled with pith, taking away the sawfly's habitat. The larva cannot survive to cut the stem. Since rescue, additional solid stem varieties have been released through the agricultural experiment stations of North Dakota, Montana, the USDA, and Canada. Examples of current varieties include Mott, Shoto, and AC Lillian. Post-plant resistance using solid stem wheat varieties are the best pest management strategy for reducing sawfly damage. The newer solid stem varieties have comparable yield and grain quality to the hollow stem varieties. If a grower has consistent sawfly problems in certain fields, a resistant variety of spring wheat should be seeded or a non-host crop should be planted. If the grower does seed a non-resistant variety, damage is reduced if seeding is done after May 20th, but a late seeding may mean a reduction in yield. Weather conditions can influence the development of the pith in solid stem varieties. If the weather is cloudy and rainy during stem elongation, the stem may not completely fill with pith. Resistance to the sawfly is reduced. The most effective pest management strategy is to plant as early as possible to maximize yield of solid stem varieties. Several natural enemies attack wheat stem sawfly. These natural enemies can kill a high proportion of sawfly larvae, up to 80% in some years and locations where sawfly populations have been high. In North Dakota, the most important species in wheat is Bracon cephi, a parasitic wasp. Another species, Bracon lysogaster, attacks sawfly in more native grass habitats. Bracon cephi females are able to sense sawfly larvae feeding in the stem, and the females lay their eggs in the wheat stem near the sawfly larvae. Once the parasitic wasp larvae emerge, they begin feeding on the sawfly larvae and will kill them. Parasitic wasps have two generations per year. The first generation will cut a small circular hole in the stem when it emerges during mid-season. Parasitoids overwinter in the upper half of the wheat stem in cocoons. Parasitoids also are able to survive in solid stem wheat varieties increasing the value of biological control as an integrated pest management strategy that is compatible with host plant resistance. 
several cultural control practices used singly or in combination may help reduce or minimize weed stem sawfly infestations. Swathing, tillage, delayed planting, and crop rotation all have been recommended, although each has an associated cost. Swathing or using a stripper header are the only pest management practices that can be utilized in the current year of the infestation. Swathing sometimes is conducted on just the outer one or two swaths bordering the field if the infestation is heavy in the field edges only. Swathing prevents the softline larvae from cutting the stem and reduces yield losses due to lodging. The disadvantage of this technique are that it requires an additional field operation and swathing may adversely impact parasitic wasps that attack the sawfly larvae in the upper portions of the stems. If a producer decides to swath grain, use a high swathing height to conserve the parasitoids that attack weed stem sawfly. Research from Montana State University has shown that taller residue at least the lower one-third of the plant is better for conserving the parasitoids. To determine if producers need to swath fields, sample wheat crops and determine the percent of plants infested by sawfly before harvest. The presence of weed stem sawfly can be verified by splitting the stems and looking for the S-shaped larvae inside the stem. Another symptom of the sawfly feeding is the presence of the sawdust-like frass inside the stem. If more than 15% of the stems are infested by sawflies, producers should swath or use a stripper header on the weed crop. Producers should swath the sawfly infested wheat as soon as the kernel moisture drops below 40% to prevent infested stems from lodging. Stripper headers may be used for straight cutting the crop and improve parasitoid conservation by leaving the majority of the stem intact. Both fall and spring tillage have been used to expose overwintering sawfly larvae to cold and dry conditions to increase larval mortality. Tillage for sawfly control runs counter to the current reduced no-tillage recommendations. Current research has demonstrated that 10% larval survival in the field will lead to infestation levels as high as the previous season. Tillage practices will not cause great enough larval mortality to be effective. Also, tillage negatively impacts the parasitic wasp numbers. In a recent survey of tilled and no-till fields in Montana, 75% of the no-tilled fields had higher parasitoid numbers and less sawfly damage than the neighboring tilled fields. Swathing and tillage also add expenses such as fuel, tractor time, and labor cost. Delayed planting after May 20th also has been suggested. A late planted crop will not have reached the stem elongation stage when weed stem sawfly females are ready to lay eggs, but lower yields are usually obtained because of the late planting date. Also, calendar dates may not accurately reflect sawfly development. Weed stem sawfly will not lay eggs into corn, legumes, or other broadleaf crops. So rotation with a non-host crop can reduce populations, at least within a specific field. However, sawflies can fly considerable distances, so reinfestation from nearby fields, grass borders, or conservation reserve program land is possible in subsequent years. Crop rotation also has disease and pest management and soil fertility benefits. Insecticides generally have not been effective against weed stem sawfly. Possible reasons why insecticides are ineffective for pest management of weed stem sawfly include 1. Emergence periods of adult is long, up to one month. 2. 
Short lifespan of the adult softline makes it difficult to target insecticide applications for adults to prevent overposition. Three, adults spend little time feeding or imbibing water, which may minimize oral exposure to insecticides. And four, eggs, larvae, pupae are protected within the plant, making them inaccessible to foliar insecticides. In terms of economics, insecticides can often be too costly for production management practices in low value and large acreage crops. A recent field demonstration plot near Mott in southwestern North Dakota resulted in a net loss of $13.5 per acre when three applications of pyrethroid insecticides were applied at the beginning, peak, and end of the wheat stem sawfly adult flight. Insecticides also disrupt and kill beneficial insects that naturally keep sawfly populations low. After more than 90 years, wheat stem sawfly continues to plague wheat producers in North Dakota and other wheat growing areas. Solid stem varieties provide the most reliable pest management strategy to prevent losses. Research at North Dakota State University continues to focus on the development of solid stem varieties with excellent yield potential and quality. Additional studies are planned to develop a degree day model for wheat stem sawfly and parasitoids and to continue evaluating alternative methods of integrated pest management. For more information on wheat stem sawfly, Check out the following websites on your screen. Thank you and have a good day.